See Geordie Journals. It's been a big day, big night. Yeah. Some bombshells dropping at St James's Park today, hasn't it, Dom? And you were there to hear it all. Yes, and I think people may only just be finding out about it now, yes. because um, or just there or thereabouts, because we've been speaking to Newcastle Sporting Director Paul Mitchell after a interesting summer, a Very frustrating good. summer, a failure of a summer, you could say. And uh, Paul Mitchell was asked all about it, and had plenty to say. We were speaking to, to him on, off the record. Uh, it was about the best part of two hours nearly in, in yeah. the end. <laughs> um, you've seen some of the quotes. Some uh -huh. of it is very um, eye-opening. I think it's illuminating. In some things we possibly had an idea of, but couldn't quite uh, clarify. They were clarified from Paul Mitchell. I think he was very generous with his time. He was, he was open and uh, was, was a good talker as well. Very importantly, one thing... Uh, which I think was brought up in the media immediately after this, and we were asking those questions, was, is anybody going to front up? Is anybody going to... Eddie Howe, almost, in many ways, was answering the questions of an accountant, a CEO. Yeah. He was asking, not, not a football manager. So it's nice that the club have done that. And one thing that they did say to you guys, which was, uh, that was music to everyone's ears, I would imagine, is that they want this to be a continuous dialogue, yes. not just something that crops up once every so often. So that's a really positive yeah. thing that, that somebody like Paul Mitchell of his standing and his control at the football club, and we'll come on to his control <laughs> at the football club in a moment, because this is the video, as it'll be titled, the, the kind of inside track, because you were there. Yeah. You've seen every facial expression. You've seen everything that everyone talked about. Yeah. You, you got the answers, you got the tone. And I think that's very important because I, I wasn't there, but I've read what you've written. Yeah. I've read what other people have written. And it's not always perfect tone is it it's no, sometimes there were, hard there's to probably some things paul mitchell said that won't be repeated because he said them in a very joking manner but written down would seem yeah. very brutal if you know what i mean and, yeah. and and people you can't get those nuances so we sort of agreed between newcastle paul mitchell and and the press that those things wouldn't wouldn't go out because it's what was said in a sort of natural conversation uh, rather yeah. than a question answer situation. It's always the problem when you text people things sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yes, as we know. <laughs> We've had a few of those like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right, so why was the transfer window a disaster? Well Paul Mitchell Am I being a bit I don't think uh, it was in my opinion. Yes. Well Paul Mitchell was asked that. Was it a failure yeah. have the club um failed to strengthen, which is basically the minimum target of any transfer window is to end a transfer window stronger than what you started with it well Mitchell actually some fans may not like this said he feels the squad have been added to with look, uh, Lloyd Kelly uh, Lewis Hall who was already here even mentioned Sandro Tonali so that wasn't the best start can I jump in here yes so I think that's one thing that I haven't mentioned on our videos but I mentioned I think in a tweet recently right. was the alarm bells for me were going with a conversation had with Paul Mitchell in Germany when me and Jordan were there. And it was a, a discussion of talk about, well, it was talk about signings from within. Yeah. We also need to be mindful of the players within who will strengthen the squad. And you, tr you try not to worry too much, but there was a little alarm bell went off in my head yeah. when I heard that, thinking, I think I've heard this before. And it might be someone like Alan Pardew or Mike Ashley, one of his cronies yeah. has said something like that before. Yeah, and that's what the transfer window sort of it regressed to it reminded us unfortunately yeah, of previous eras but Paul Mitchell said he arrived probably at a far from ideal time midway through well July early July he arrived at that point Newcastle's transfer strategy is already firmed up it's already in place he said sporting directors or his role is not to deal on an ad hoc basis on a reactive basis it's to pursue the targets that eddie howe wants eddie howe as much as he's tried to distance himself from it is still very much involved in the transfer process and every target newcastle had was a target eddie howe or it was a player eddie howe wanted and it was paul mitchell's job ultimately to support that and pursue the players eddie howe wanted and paul mitchell was open in admitting which i think is the bombshell that newcastle did not have really the recruitment structure in place this is three and a half years or two and a half years three years after the takeover to basically look at alternatives to 
to the big one. He didn't name him. Um, Mark Gay being the big one. Yeah, there was um, lots of sk skirting around who it actually was, wasn't there? Yeah. On the record, anyway. Yes. But, yeah, Newcastle, he basically said, questioned, is the recruitment, is the scout network fit for purpose? That's his job to look at and make sure it improves in future windows. And that supporting role that he played, he's like obviously tried to distance himself from having a super hands-on direct yeah. involvement with the window that's just gone that supportment role will hopefully in future windows develop into more of a driving role but he said three people will spearhead that it's him uh, it's Darren Eels the CEO and it's Eddie Howe so I, I thought it was really interesting I read sort of I haven't read every single word but the, what I took from it was that was Eddie's window and that was Darren Eels' window and that was what was set in place by Amanda and Miara whoever it was beforehand that was their work but from now on you're going to see my work that's kind of what I read yes. between the lines of, of what he was saying that's what it seemed to be yeah he, he you could tell his, his frustrations were there it was he said he described it as a sort of learning curve for him he, he came in and the setup of the club was was not necessarily used to um, not necessarily what he was used to and now he had to basically just go right I'm here to support what you've put in place whether you could argue as sporting director he could have done more he could have done more to convince Eddie Howe to sign certain players or looked at certain players but then he, it, that went back to I didn't feel like recruitment. reading what he said you were there you heard it but reading what he said I didn't get the sense that that was what he was suggesting was the case I, I thought it all, was almost like he, he, he talked a bit was it on off the record where he talked about the idea of what a sporting director does at a football club um, it was largely off the record was it yes can we discuss a bit of that and yeah, yeah you say what, what you want and I just wanted to say that he almost gave he almost gave an idea of what a sporting director is and bust a few myths I think on what he does and what other sporting directors do and it seemed very much like it was he's the man who would go out find a certain pool of players come back to a manager and present it back in a bite-sized manner so he might have 70 players that he looks at skirts it down to about 10 then gives it gives five to the manager and says there's a b c d and e yes. and what which one do you like do you like this do you like that they all fit the criteria of the way that you want to play football he, he talked about more of a synergy i would say between a sporting director and a manager and there has to be that yes i think he also talked in some manners of saying it hasn't been perfect no, no, he was very, very there honest have been about blips, that. But that's normal in these early working relationships yes. when big decisions are being made. Because I think at one point he referenced something like really being worried about spending £6 million on a player probably 10 years yeah. ago. And whereas now that's just nothing. Yeah. Um, so they are big decisions and big pressures. But I think he talked a lot about... I, I, from listening to Eddie Howe, and I always thought it was difficult the other day to listen to... I thought I felt really sorry for Howe after listening to him. I thought, actually, I feel like you're being hung out to dry here. No one else is doing the talking. Mm. And you're the only man doing it. And you, you're the man who's got to actually deliver success. Yes. There's nobody else in charge now. You've got to do it. Mm. Whereas I wasn't sure whether he was covering up a bit for the people around him and he felt naturally frustrated or whether he was trying to just bring that unity together to think this is the only way we can succeed now. Yeah. I wasn't sure what his strategy was, but I heard him. And now listen... Well reading what I've seen from Paul Mitchell I think I'm hearing two people say the same things I'm hearing two people speak in very similar terms I don't really get the sense that neither I don't think there's a battle or as big a battle going on there as what maybe has been suggested that's just my take on listening to the two yeah I'm I'm not sure because uh, right, right. there was some stuff uh, Eddie Howe's his message has been I'm removed from this process at like I'm not hands-on with transfers. Uh, one message Paul Mitchell was quick to get across, I say quick to get across, in the hour and a half, two hours we spoke to him, is Eddie Howe is very much involved in transfers, which goes against a little bit what Eddie Howe was saying, where he said this is his most hands-off transfer window. Paul Mitchell said Eddie Howe is very, very much involved and he speaks to him maybe more than once a day at length. So Eddie Howe knew every step of basically every transfer target Newcastle were pursuing. So it was very so much that involved. So uh, that was the major point of contention, wasn't it? That Eddie Howe's went, now to do with me. Yeah. And uh, Paul Mitchell today basically said the opposite, didn't he? he went, yes. it's everything to do with you. I speak to you every single night. Yeah. <laughs> I speak to you More every... than his wife, yeah. <laughs> is uh, what he said. I think that's the way in these things. So 
What other major talking points do you think came out of that? I mean, it's a lot for even for you to digest. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit, bit frazzled. I've just yeah. wrote my piece, which will go on the Shields Gazette. Uh, Should be on there now. Well, yeah, by the time you watch this, it all goes to plan. We're planning to get this up on the dot of embargo. Yeah, might be so. ambitious, but yeah. <laughs> um, well, he was asked about the players already at the club. Could they be sold in future windows? Couldn't really say, as you never can, you couldn't really predict. But I think one one message which we were talking about off camera, Paul Mitchell said that the money almost saved this window. Newcastle had money to spend. That was there evidenced by the pursuit of Mark Gay. The Which decision didn't go on as long as, he said, didn't go on as long as people suggested. No, no. Um, they remained in dialogue until deadline day. Um, whether they briefed sort of 60, 65, 70 incremental bids, Newcastle, the bottom line is, Newcastle wouldn't get in a bit more with themselves. Yeah. That's w what it was. And they've seen a player with two years left on his contract and decided this is too rich for us. Yes. Which is what we're kind of it looked like from the outside looking in didn't it yeah and it's all about Paul Mitchell said his his role is to strategize and think about the long term or the medium to long term it would have been reactionary to not get Mark Gahey and just go out and sign a player in alternative without that like we've touched on extensive recruitment network in place where Eddie Howe was absolutely sure that uh, an alternative was the right man for him. It seemed like the I'm just, I'm yeah, this I'm guy doing, trying a, to... doing a 17 point turn. Line. <laughs> it sounded like Eddie Howe, as much as he said there were alternatives, Paul Mitchell also said there were alternatives that were discussed. Eddie Howe felt like Mark Gay was the man for him, even though neither Paul Mitchell nor Eddie Howe have said that on the record. But that's the overall impression we're getting. And does not spending that money I think personally I think it could have been reinvested in other areas of the squad right wing for example but it seems like Newcastle really wanted that player and have probably made the decision thinking of in future windows time um, we won't spend that money that we'll have and look in the future to to invest it on a player where we know we can get maybe for cheaper is that Mark Gay is that someone else and, and spend it more wisely if you like I'm going to come to you I'm going to ask you in a second before I go on a little bit of my thoughts on okay. on players currently at the football club and the, what the future might hold but I'm going to come to you straight after and ask you about the idea of signing players from different markets whether it has to be British based which is one thing that's been often levelled at Eddie Howe Premier League experience or nothing in many respects that was discussed at length as well during this wasn't it where it was brought up by Paul Mitchell unchallenged was it? yes interesting hang on for that one then do like, comment, share and subscribe on this video if you do like it. Of course, I've got to mention we do have sponsors as well for Rivers Financial Planning. You get all the bits and bobs down there. It might be on the screen. Depends how quick we get this up. But anyway, I think my thoughts on the project as a whole, I think one thing that's probably come into my realisation, having read the stuff from Paul Mitchell as well, is it's been a real summer of realisation for me as not only a journalist but as a fan. I think we all knew this project could take time. I don't think anybody realised it would probably take as much time as people are now saying. Yeah. I think I, I'd built in my head, and this you don't have to do this, I could be totally wrong, but this is my opinion. I built in my head thinking, there's probably three players in that team where you wouldn't swap them. They're absolutely perfect for this team. Alexander Isak, Bruno Guimaraes, uh, Anthony Gordon. You wouldn't swap them for anybody. You could put yeah. anybody on the table and I'll probably keep those because they're ours and they're, they, they love it here and that's whatever and they've played well for it. I've now come to the realisation, I think when this club eventually does reach where it wants to go, I don't think any of those players, I, I, th I think it might be a push to say anybody in this squad is actually at this football club. It might not be 10 to 15 years, but I still think you're talking another double what we've seen already. You're probably talking six or seven years, I think, before Newcastle are even touching, where we thought they might be getting to within five years. And I think that's a realisation to me, that it's going to take it's sad. I do not want it to happen. The last thing in the world I want to do is lose, particularly Bruno Guimaraes and Alexander Isak, um, because of the way they are and the love for the football club. Yeah. I think Anthony Gordon, and this isn't a criticism of Anthony Gordon, you just had to listen to that overlap interview to know what type of person that he is. I've never believed Anthony Gordon from listening to that interview from that second. I've said it to you and I've said it to Jordan as well, off the camera, that Newcastle are not his destination. Mm. I've always think we're a stepping stone to where he wants to be. Yeah. 
unless Newcastle get there. I always felt differently slightly with Bruno, especially with the captaincy. And yeah. Isak, with his bad experiences at Borussia Dortmund when he was a kid, you come somewhere you loved, you're in the top division. There's differences to their game to yeah. what there is to Anthony Gordon, in my opinion. I've now come to the realisation I don't think any of them are here when this club gets to where we wanted to go. And where, where I still think I'm sure it will go, Yeah, I just... Just think, and there's going to be some old viewers out there who will be really disappointed about that analysis because they'll be like, bloody hell, man, I wanted it in my lifetime. <laughs> I want it in my lifetime as well. <laughs> and I don't think it'll be that long, fingers crossed. I don't, I don't think I'm going anywhere. Yeah. But that's the thing for me is it, it's been a summer realisation that the rules and the constraints on English football and European football are not going to allow Newcastle United to accelerate the way that we really hoped they would. And I think everybody hoped, oh, they'll find a way I think it's slowly becoming apparent there is no way. It, this is the way you have to go and it's sell. going to take a while. And it's selling. Until you sell, you can't have a Brighton summer where they're yeah. the top spenders. Until you sell, you can't do what Aston Villa did a few years ago or West Ham, West Ham have yeah. done with the Declan Rice thing. Until you do that, that wasn't saying Aston Villa now because they're in the same situation as Newcastle United, but when they sold Jack Grealish, that you've got the same players. Oh. There's a win. We still haven't got that tripod. So do if you can see the thanks button down there, and you want a tripod for the Johnny journals. So anyway, I was going to come on to that. Uh, no. The idea of, unless you want to have a comment on that one. No, yeah, because I think it goes to a lot of what Paul Mitchell said. He said, Newcastle haven't been a good selling club, which I think everyone knows. The, the, the player sales are going to be a big part of Newcastle's future, whether you like it, whether you like it or not. And I think these players, your, your Brunos, your Isaks, your Gordons, your, your big assets. The fact Paul Mitchell's saying, look, he's, his message was one of patience, one of the PSR sort of scare, if you like, and the whole situation surrounding that has probably put Newcastle back two years, three years even. So when you're looking, where do you want to go? Th those players are probably at the level of where Newcastle want to go yeah but are they going to hang around for two three years time that's the problem isn't it probably that's the problem probably not but just while I'm thinking um, obviously yes uh, Alba Mayan was at St James's Park on Sunday for the Spurs game we didn't leave St James's Park we're not going to say <laughs> the time because we'll probably tell off but we didn't leave till very late yes and there was on still Sunday there. and there was still there there was yeah. a row of blacked out cars all the way down yeah. towards the Bobby Robson statue wasn't yes. it and they were still there we don't know what those talks were, but it well, was mentioned a little bit by Paul Mitchell, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Um, he spoke one-on-one, -on -one, well, I say one-on-one, -on -one, with the, the PIF um, representatives and with um, yes, yeah. Yasser Alvamayan as well. Just them in, in his um, at St James's Park and said, look, he, PIF, or as you'd expect, are as committed as ever. Their ambition has not wavered. They it's are still year. really completely invested in this project. And Yassia is very well versed in what Newcastle's situation is and what the reality is. And will it take a bit more time? Yes, but PIF aren't going anyway. What's the message for Well, that's Paul really Mitchell? good to hear because I think I've said in a piece recently and I think on a video as well, until they've written that big check, that yeah. I'm, I'll, always that's retain, thing. I'll always retain a level of scepticism. It's always actions speak louder than words, isn't they it? They do, so. and we're yet to see any actions. In Rafa Benitez's words, we've seen a significant lick of paint here at <laughs> Benton, more than what Ashley did for him. But we've seen a lick of paint, 10 millions worth of paint here. Yes. But there's been no new training ground, which I think would have been the, the probably, in my opinion, one of the easiest things to do, considering yeah. you're in a you're in an area where there is so much green space to do anything that you want. You can do anything you want here. All you have to do is go five miles out and you're in you're in the, the depths of Northumberland. So yeah. you can do anything you want. That's disappointing. The, the stadium a little bit less so. I understand the delays. Having spoken to Brad Miller, I, I get the reasoning behind that, but I want to see when does imminent become really imminent? And that's what we need. We want some yeah. imminence see. Is that that's immediacy. Immediacy, <laughs> I like it. It's a good job easier. Anyway. No, to go back to your point you made probably five minutes ago now <laughs> in terms of do Newcastle United need to venture further than the Premier League that was something Paul Mitchell said himself right. it wasn't it was asked later on but he said we need we were too narrow in our thinking yes yes we probably were that, yeah, yeah. and um, do, do the club need to broaden its horizons globally yes and, and that's something is he going to get the power to do that did he say anything does it feel like that's what's going to happen I'm not sure. Right. That's that's the that's the worry. He said, "Look, his role will change 
from being a supportive role to more forward thinking, more driving role in yeah. future windows. But you can never tell how future windows would, yeah. would play out and yeah. I imagine it would, but he, he would never, he wouldn't quite commit to, to saying that he would take full charge of the transfers because he said it's a it's a holistic process, it's Eddie Howe, it's Darren Eels as well. I think it sounds more like you'll take control of the process from when it starts. So the strategy would be more his yes, kind of he thing. He gets involved he's from the very now, start. Well he he's his job is to look at that recruitment and all these things he's highlighted as as issues are there for, now he has a few months to address before the next transfer window in January. Will the club be able to set up a recruitment network that they ultimately haven't been able to set up in two and a half years. I think that might take time. Yeah. But did he give any time scales? Because he, he the mentioned only time scales were three to five years potentially in the the PSR situation, which people might not like, has probably knocked the club back from the point of takeover where you go in five years time. This is a five year plan. Um, it's probably knocked, knocked that back a few years. Well, people might be wondering out there, and you might not be able to answer it, because it might not even be a, a, a question for Paul Mitchell, but did you get any sense whether that money would be passed across to January and they go again when the window reopened, or was there no chatter of that? Um, not on the record, no. Oh, um, okay. It's it's one of those where new ca um, Paul Mitchell said it's this saving of money, this window, and not spending the money that was there, will help Newcastle in one, two, three windows time. Yeah. So, look, there was money to spend, but Newcastle don't want to be in that PSR situation they were in June again, which I think look, is a sort of scared the club to death, really, Yeah. By uh, for want of a better word. Um, and, OK, there's 70, 80 million to spend this summer. That money was there, but are you better saving it and spending... 150 million yeah, next, year. next summer and, and getting a few player sales and getting real real quality rather than just getting players who are almost stopgap players interesting interesting be interested to know your thoughts do jump in the comments and let me know what you think of yeah, the Paul let us know because there'll be a lot I've come pretty much straight from Paul Mitchell there'll be a lot that Paul Mitchell said that may have gone over our heads yeah, right yeah, now yeah. as we're trying to remember it so comment anything that you would have wanted Paul Mitchell to answer and I'll let you know what he said yeah, or Don will be in the it. comments tonight and he'll answer your questions if you've got any questions about that and I'll try my best as well if I can right is there anything else you think maybe off the the Eddie Howe stuff because this is almost like a sequel to the video you and Jordan did it in, is, yeah. in January yeah uh, January in July yeah um, from Germany <laughs> Paul Mitchell um, had a cameo in that, by the way. Yes. Why um, <laughs> to cut that bit out? Where obviously you, it's almost like roles reverse. You had a very real impression of what Eddie Howe said and what yeah. the feeling was surrounding that, and Paul Mitchell addressed that. So just to summarise, what was Eddie Howe's feeling um, back in back in July that uh, you got anyway? I got a sense of a rather unsettled manager, mm. somebody who was questioning without feeling like he was going to leave but questioning whether the football club almost challenging the football club to make sure that he remained happy and I always got the sense he was saying this is what I want I want this football club to run like it did and I got the sense again reading between the lines and paraphrasing largely is that it worked before why are we why are we ripping up the rule book and starting yeah. again so I, I think he, he was never critical of Paul Mitchell he was never he was he was actually really positive about Paul Mitchell, really positive about James Bunce and others uh, who come into the Cup Football Club and changes that have been made, but did challenge the football club to say, you need to keep me happy. Yeah. That was that was the... And that was very much... I took it from being in that room, talking about transfers, talking about power, uh, the dynamic, whether he would have final says. Because a lot of this transfer stuff over the last two, year, uh, last two and a half years has been driven by Eddie Howe um, from the very off with a really big help in hand from the likes of Amanda and Mia Dad, who, like I say, held Eddie's hand all the way through it and worked tirelessly, particularly in that first window, to establish a relationship that stayed strong and true all the way till the day that they left the football club. Um, that all changed. That got The rule, got, rule book got ripped up in the summer, and I don't think Eddie was very happy about it. As yeah. many people, you know what? You speak to plenty of people, nobody was happy about it, really. But I can... And I wasn't happy about it, because I thought they were great. You know... 
I really did. They, they really, they've been good to me in the past, um, and I was disappointed to see them go. But I could also see the reasons why they were they were let go because a, a football club has a, has to function, and it was chaotic at times. But there were reasons for the chaos, which we're not going to go through all of that <laughs> again. But I think Eddie Howe was unhappy the change had been implemented, and I think he was laying down his marker to say, "This is the way we do things, and that's what I want." And it sounds like the club have he got basically that. done that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul Mitchell was asked, "Are oh, oh the or is the dust settled basically on that situation and I think all the staff are leaving that. Yeah. <laughs> we might see it, yeah. <laughs> uh, probably not. Um, so yeah, the dust is, is settled on that situation. Um, Paul Mitchell said, look, his job is to ultimately help keep Eddie Howe happy. He said, at the moment, I say we'll see Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe is having some time away from the club, a, a, like a bit of a, a bit of a break because it's such a stressful hands-on job that you, you need that time to, to de-stress and he said Paul Mitchell is over communicated with Eddie Howe because he said if you don't communicate everything and over communicate you risk risk that breakdown of, of trust of, of, of anything particularly in new roles and that's that's so important and uh, I've got the quote quotes up there if you if you want to read through them but basically he just wants to make sure Eddie Howe is happy and uh, that, that's a that's a big one. He said positive conflict may may happen, yeah. arguments may happen, but it's all for the betterment of the football club, and it's all about moving. In, that's in kind the of right what direction. I was hitting at earlier when I said I hear two people singing the same song. Yeah, is that I, I don't think they're exactly right. They're slightly out of tune in some respects, but they are both singing the same song from the same sheet. It's just not quite in tune yet, but that doesn't mean that it won't come. I think they both want the right thing. They both want success for Newcastle United. And I think Eddie Howe's been really big in stressing that regularly. Yeah. That it's it's all about the betterment of Newcastle United and the football club and that's been yet all today. Yeah, working together. Working it, it goes back to just us us being there speaking to Paul Mitchell. That was a, a an overriding message as well. Like the club wants to be a club that communicates. Look, if you if you're gonna write and say negative things about Newcastle, that's fine. If ideally has to be justified um, but if the club are doing well well praise them and um, we're always quite open and honest with our feelings uh, feelings about the club and at one of those things that Paul Mitchell spoke about today and I thought generally speaking he helped um, contextualise I think there was fans may say excuses of why the summer transfer window wasn't a success but he put into context why Newcastle ultimately fell short. You know what? I think that's one thing. Before I'm going to give you the final word, is sort of so you can gather your thoughts to think on what, what well you think of that I'm summary well of, the place. of what you've heard today. I think that's one thing the club have done really well in recent times. Is not only I got the opportunity to speak to Peter Silverstone, you did in Japan as well. Yes. I got the chance to speak to Peter Silverstone and ask him really straight and honest questions. Darren Neils has fronted up a couple of times in the last six months to a year and also got a really good chance to speak to Brad Miller very recently so I've I've been given that context and try to express that to you through pieces on the Gazette and on the Castle World about why certain things haven't happened sponsorship deals not pricing themselves wrongly for the club that they think they're going to become and things like that it gives you that context the idea of we're not just going to add little bits to the stadium it's got to be a check that's written only once yeah. which in my head as soon as I heard that it was Tottenham Hotspur that came in my head. I thought of the idea of producing something really worthwhile. So we got we gave you that context. The football club allowed that to happen. And again, I think they've done well here to allow everybody to get that context so you guys can colour how you write. You might not be able to say it all on this camera. That's how these things work. We'd love to tell you everything that's said. <laughs> but um, And it's not because we want to keep things back and we're not being, you know, oh, I can't. It's a trust. It's it's as much yeah. Eddie Howe and Paul if Mitchell I, if, trusting. If, if, if I was to go and say everything Paul Mitchell yeah. said on and off the record, I'll tell you one thing, I won't be invited there and I won't be no, invited no. back to speak with Paul Mitchell. It's a, it's an ongoing relationship. And, and these and things won't happen, so you won't get anything if if people suddenly say, right, this is what he did and this is what he yeah. said. I think that would only ever happen in ridiculously uh, rare cases where something was bizarre was said that anybody would break, yeah. break that and I've never known it to happen, not here anyway. <laughs> so, in summary, if you want to go give people a little bullet points of, of what you learned today not only as a journalist but as a fan 
because you went in there as both effectively yeah. what were the bullet points you would take from today well Paul Mitchell I think the overall message is Paul Mitchell Eddie Howe Darren Eels you me the fans all want the same thing we all want Newcastle United to be a success and that hasn't wavered since since the takeover and look are certain things at the club preventing that from happening PSR is one of them but structures existing structures that were in place that have been maybe a bit chaotic as you've said previously have that has that prevented things yes I thought um, Paul Mitchell was very honest in in sort of revealing or admitting the club has shortcomings in terms of player recruitment and in terms of um, that side of things and, and looking being a bit sort of tunnel vision in terms of looking at players and I think that was evidenced in the pursuit of Mark Gay um, but overall the message is the transfer decisions made this summer were as frustrating as they were came and came from shortcomings of the football club but also a conscious effort to almost future proof the club and make sure the club are still heading in the right direction okay maybe not in this window it may take a step backwards to take two steps forward but the club have money to spend that can now be invested in players that Eddie Howe definitely wants that Paul Mitchell can identify and want and uh, the club can move forward in that way will it happen overnight no is patience required yes which is probably not what people want to hear almost three years into this project it's almost like a, a regression but that is the reality of the situation as Paul Mitchell told it. Success isn't a straight line, is that what people Basically, sometimes yeah. say? Yeah. And this is still navigating. Mm. Yeah, so right. you, you may disagree, you may agree with what Paul Mitchell said. I had reservations over over some of it. Um, but I think on the whole the message he got across you can't really disagree with. He he's made decisions he feels or is the right thing and Eddie Howe feels is the right thing for Newcastle United and it's how much you trust the decision makers at the club to how much you probably um, believe and uh, sort of listen to and acknowledge and agree with what, what they're saying We don't need to get back and edit this video and get it, get it online <laughs> for you guys so we'll end it there if you do have any other questions or any comments particularly about what we've said or what Paul Mitchell said do jump in the comments me and Don will keep an eye on them tonight and we'll try to answer as many if, as right. we possibly can my um, head's all over the place at the yeah, moment yeah <laughs> yeah it, it is a lot to take in um, it was well yeah it was 90 minutes but it was probably it was like a dissertation's worth, worth um, of quotes so yeah. we I haven't like got through played, it all I feel like you played 90 minutes after <laughs> yeah. Right, anyway, I'm going to let Dom get off because he's had a long day. So do like, comment, share and subscribe for all you Jordy Journals content. Click the bell, there's a thanks button if you like the type of thing that we do. Again, all we've come on here to do is give you a little bit of an inside track on what was said, what wasn't said, the context of, of a situation that's kind of been unfolding at Newcastle United over the last week. I've got to say thanks to Newcastle United and Paul Mitchell for spending yes. their time and allowing, allowing uh, journalists in to, to ask questions and discuss these things. But anyway... You know the drill, like, comment, share, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.